Good evening, everybody. I am delighted to present my second presentation with you and have a minor contribution to help you about a very critical topic in the research, even in other disciplines, but mostly is a critical issue in academic field, which it is plagiarism. What is plagiarism? And what is the negative impact of plagiarism? How to avoid it in five easy and important steps. This will be our topic today. I want to share with you briefly about the definition, about the negative impact, and uh, the most importantly, how to completely 100% avoid plagiarism in your research paper, your thesis, your final year project, and so on. Plagiarism is copying other research, other idea, other product for other researchers, staff, student, colleague, engineers, or any kind of profession, and show is at your original and uh, your own data. This can be included your word plagiarism as a taking others word or idea this is somehow hidden and some people are smart they don't copy paste the word by word but they feel the idea and they try to reproduce the idea without acknowledgement or a proper acknowledgement with the original author. This is called plagiarism. So whatever the purpose, uh, we should avoid it. And of course, the bad negative impact of plagiarism are numerous. For example, you lose your degree if you are final year student or master or PhD candidate and the reputation will be ruined. Nobody trusts you after that. Uh, and uh, the reputation, reputation of the institution also will be affected negatively. Uh, for this reason, we should avoid plagiarism because it uh, will be an indication of a bad reputation for this uh, particular person. That is why as academician, we have to build our reputation through hard working, smart idea and our effort, not to steal others' efforts. So now we knew what is the plagiarism, but how we uh, avoid it? how we uh, try to paraphrase or to acknowledge others idea. Let us uh, uh, see. First of all, when you read any phrase, any paper, especially during literature review, when you are a master or PhD student, or final year student, you read numerous of papers, you need to read them and understand the context carefully and thoroughly. Then you can start write some, uh, your understanding in a separate page or separate paragraph. This can be a fair draft. This will be the first step 
of trial to paraphrase and to avoid plagiarism. In case, in case, if you need to copy and paste some sentence from this particular author, paper, thesis, and whatever, this is called it Kyot means that uh, you copy and paste few sentence only uh, from another researcher's work. And you should put them between quotation marks like that, for example. When anybody read that, he, they understand that this is the quotation mark. When they see this quotation mark, they understand that this is exactly word by word from other people. But there is a note we should take into consideration. The quotation should be uh, at, as little as possible, as little as much as possible. By time when you grow your academic skill, knowledge and writing style, you should completely avoid the cure unless it is very necessary. If that has happened, it should be rarely and you should use this quotation mark, which indicate that you completely, word by word, you have taken that from another resource, whatever the resource. Then identify what should be cited and what should be or shouldn't be cited. This means referencing. Maybe we specify another a specific presentation for referencing, how to do it through EndNote and Mandalay. A manage your a citation that you can use citation software and use plagiarism checkers, for example, Terenson. But before we do that, there is a, one more important point that understand the context. Without this, it will be impossible to paraphrase and to avoid plagiarism. So we should pay attention about uh, this point. So the plagiarism is not only copying others word by word. As I uh, explained it in the beginning, even you steal idea of someone, but you change the word, this is also called plagiarism. And we explain that shortly. Let us see this example. This example, it is about the elephant. This call, the elephant is the larger mammal in the world and can weigh nearly 8, 10 tons. It has a look, there is a quotation mark. What does that mean? The takers between quotation marks are borrowed from somebody else. So this is the original text. And uh, the takers between quotation marks are considered cured. If we want to paraphrase, if we want to paraphrase, we have the same text here. We have the same text here in bold. Let us look how it 
was paraphrased. The elephant is the largest mammal in the world and can weigh early, uh, nearly eight tons. This is almost same. It is large floppy ears help to cool its body and protect it from insects. It is proboscis that runs from its head to the ground, means that it is too long, it is nose, and is used as a tool and for drinking and bathing. So this can be a source of paraphrasing and the author could uh, reduce plagiarism. So he just uh, copied and pasted the first sentence, but the rest from here, I mean the quotation mark, if we compare these two parts, we can find that it has the same meaning, but in totally different phrases and wording. Let's call it paraphrasing. And shortly we explain how to paraphrase. This is very important, but this is just for example. Some people, they use the text, they just use, uh, find synonym, for example. Instead of massive, they use great. Instead of large, they use huge, uh, and so on. For example, let us have look here. This is the original text, and this is the, the author thing is a paraphrasing to avoid plagiarism. Instead of elephant, he used pachyderm. Use the same sentence here. And after that, it weight is anywhere from 500 pounds to eight tons. So he just uh, played with the word. It has a huge body. Massive body became huge. Large ears became big. Long trunk became extended trunk that can pick up objects. You see it to hunt up or pick up object. Here it just a right can pick up object. Sound warning here as a horn to trumpet warning. So just change warning. Here is written an arm raised in greeting to a host for drinking water. Here written greet others, drink water or bathe. So as we can compare from here with here, the wording are quite similar. And the sentence is quite similar. Unfortunately, the author believes that he successfully paraphrased and avoided plagiarism. But unfortunately, the updated versions of uh, plagiarism software can detect this kind of a uh, playing with word, let us say playing between two brackets, playing with wording very easily. And it's still considered plagiarism and all the effort of this researcher will be useless. This one call it patch writing. Patch writing has a difference with paraphrasing. In the paraphrasing, as we found here, the researcher, yeah, it's true, from, he copied the first sentence, but for the rest, he doesn't change only words, but he changes the idea, 
or uh, expression. So it is not just uh, finding synonyms and uh, using uh, words. For example, here have massive body, large ears, long trunk. In here, use it totally different. It is large floppy ears help to call it his body. So it's totally use a different uh, idea and expression. And later I will do that uh, paraphrasing in my own research paper. I'm writing a review paper now, but before we go there, let us explain the important five steps, how to avoid plagiarism in only five steps. Let us see. First of all, read, understand the text completely. Read several times, read thoroughly, understand the context. Start from abstract, then look up at the conclusion. Later, for example, you look up the table and figure, use the scan and scheme skills. After that, step by step, you increase your reading and understanding of the particular text in that paper. Without it, proper reading, it will be impossible to start a paraphrasing. Or in that case, maybe you do patch writing instead of paraphrasing. And patch writing demonstrated that the researcher didn't understand the context, just find synonym of the words or playing a position of the word. But paraphrasing is totally different. You use your own wording, idea to represent the somebody's own uh, wording in an, uh, your own way. So first step is reading. In the second step, you write what you understood. Don't look at the, when you write, don't look at the source text. You put the paper, you put the paper in a side and you start writing in the another piece of paper. Then, in the third uh, step, you check between the paper. For example, I got idea from this highlight, this text, and compare my writing. What I wrote, what I wrote from there. Are they close to each other? Are they identical to each other? Are these two texts? Patch writing, what does patch writing mean? We just explained. The researcher thinks that this is paraphrasing, but actually the way that he or she did is exactly the same word text. Let us show you an example here. Let me show you an example how uh, patch writing is destructive. Here, uh, focus on the bold, on the bold text. Thinness are widely recognized as an influential consumer segment, both for the purchases they make themselves and for purchases over which they exert indirect control. Here. Teenagers are generally recognized as important consumer group, both in view of 
what they buy themselves and for purchases they indirectly control. Compare between these two parts. Exactly same, just change it. Teens to teenager. Widely uh, uh, change, modify to generally. Influential became important. So just find synonyms. Exactly same. This it's not called it paraphrasing and it's still plagiarism. And by the way, there is a very important point. Some people use some software. This software doing this patch writing. And uh, people think that this is paraphrasing, but actually this is past patch writing. And the new version of software still detect this as plagiarism. And especially when we send this paper to a reviewer, he can still find. So the rest of text you can compare this one. Let us uh, show it in a different color. And this one, you can still compare between them. It's just playing off wording. So this kind of uh, word, it uh, doesn't call paraphrasing and cannot avoid the uh, plagiarism completely. So in the third stage, after you read and write, you check between them, either the original paper and the takers, for example, this is you highlight, and your own writing. Either they are very related and closely to each other, like this we show just now, or you need more steps. Or if you are an expert or you have done too many research, maybe in the first step, you can do that. So in the fourth step, if you feel that this is patch writing and not paraphrasing, you revise, read again, understand more carefully, then you uh, repeat the same steps and revise, rewrite again. And again, check your writing with, the original text. And finally, you give reference. This will be a, a different topic, how to make referencing. So uh, we repeat the necessary five steps to avoid plagiarism is read thoroughly with careful understanding, write what you understand, Third, compare, check what you write and what you read. Fourth, if you need, revise, revise. And finally, after finishing everything, you give a reference. How to give the reference by Mendeley or EndNote or whatever. This will be a specific topic. So now I want to uh, show you a true example, my review paper. My review paper, let me show you how to do it. My review paper is about finding the previous literature data about how they improve the mechanical properties, including hardness, fracture toughness, strength of an advanced material is called zirconia tuffinid alumina, which is consists of alumina as matrix and zirconia as a additive. With other additive like oxides, carbides, nitrides, carbon nanotubes, and so on, how they improve the mechanical properties. And what is the latest progress of this review paper? For more information about review paper, you can refer to the first lecturer in my YouTube channel. So let us show you an example here. 
here include this material system, this material uh, system, which means uh, ZTA developed firstly in the late 1970s in order to design alumina based composite that poses the combined merits of alumina and zirconia. This is very clear. And this is actually, uh, I can't tell you, I did patch writing, so I need to change. Here say, the alumina provides high compressive strength and hardness. Besides, it has a good chemical stability, superior wear resistance, low cost, and it is an abundant material. Let me change this particular sentence. This is just trial. I maybe need to do it many times. So firstly, I understand this material system, which means ZTA was firstly produced in the 1970s to replace alumina because of drawbacks of alumina. So if I want to uh, rewrite, let me uh, rewrite in a different color. The ZTA system was developed Uh, in the late 1970s to replace IL2 O3 based uh, ceramic, so it is a ceramic material due to it is drawback such as such a uh, as a brittleness. Here, it doesn't mention about a brittleness, but because of uh, reading thrall in the literature, I know that the main drawback of alumina is brittleness. That is why we cannot use it for a advanced application, for example, by a medical application or cutting insert. Therefore, therefore, uh, ZRO2 means zirconia was added to add merits to the matrix or to the alumina, to the alumina matrix. As I told you, this is fair trial, maybe not completely true. And after that, we can write, we express alumina. The, the here is say, the alumina provides high compressive strength and hardness. So we can write the high compressive strength and hardness of ZTA is Due to, or let us uh, use another word, uh, O to the alumina matrix. Matrix. Additionally, we don't use this site. Additionally, uh, alumina is an abundant. Instead use abandoned material we can use uh, is widely available material with low cost and having and having 
uh, there is written about good chemical stability, superior wear resistance, uh, and having uh, superior wear resistance. And uh, instead of we write again good chemical stability, uh, highly resistance to chemical reactions. So this is just a first step. Now we read, write own word, and first, the third step, check, compare. The original text here, this material system was developed firstly in the late 1970s in order to design alumina based composite that possess the combined merit of alumina zirconia. Here I written the, this, the ZTI system was developed in the late 1970s to replace alumina based ceramic due to its drawbacks such as brittleness such as it is brittleness. Let us correct grammatical. Therefore, zirconia was added to, to instead of a, to uh, provide merits to alumina matrix. The high compressive, so that mean, this uh, second sentence mean, Zirconia added to the alumina matrix, both of them together have new merit, which they were not available in the original alumina alone or individual zirconia. And here we write the alumina provide high compressive strength and hardness. Here we rewritten the high compressive strength and hardness of ZTA uh, is related or are related to are related to the alumina matrix additionally alumina is a widely available material with low cost or we can write a widely uh, uh, cheap available material and have and has superior wear resistance and highly resistance to chemical reaction. So by few steps, step by step, we improve our writing. In few steps, we can compare this original writing with my own writing. If uh, the idea, if the idea from the, or expression from the original writing, we have references here, start from reference nine to 11. If we, uh, express it in totally different way, not only using synonym or only change sentence or position, no. If we totally represent it in a new way, but still give the same idea of these two different color from three different references, this call it paraphrasing. Otherwise, if I use that one, for example, Instead of developed, I use produce. Instead of, for example, in order to, I use therefore. Instead of design, I use, for example, to treat, for example. Instead of uh, uh, combine it, for example, I use uh, a synonym of combine it, and so on. In that case, this is not called a synonym. Uh, sorry, paraphrasing. It's called patch writing, which it, it is considered plagiarism and the new version of software, plagiarism software can detect it. And even if the reviewer 
that when you usually send your paper to a journal or your thesis for checking if the reviewer is an expert and have too much experience in writing and reading others uh, research article, they can easily detect this plagiarism. So please, please avoid that batch writing. And finally, in the fifth step, you put this reference from nine to 11. For example, we have here nine. Of course, we cannot, uh, the referencing is different. We cannot put like that. We should use Mandalay, but this is just for your own understanding. And uh, the second part when uh, uh, represent compressive strength and hardness, this is the reference number 10. And the finally, uh, reference number 11. We should use Mandalay or EndNote. We cannot just simply write the reference number. This is just for your information. So that is the brief and very quick note how to completely avoid plagiarism. It will be a time consuming at the beginning. However, by time you will be uh, adopt the process and I will guarantee you, you can do plagiarism comfortably and uh, confidently. Good luck for you and thank you very much for listening. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.